Okay, those are my tools. I gotta keep those. Windows 10 installer. Windows 10 32-bit installer. Can't get rid of that. Lubuntu. Clonezilla. Nah, drivers. Oh man, I can't afford to overwrite any of these. Ah, there has to be a better way of doing this. Have you ever wanted just one magic USB stick that could do it all? Well, you are in luck, my friend, because today I'm going to show you how to build what I use. And hopefully you'll find it as useful as I do. It's all in the reflexes. Okay, to get started with this build, you're going to need a few things. Obviously, a USB stick. I recommend something no smaller than 8 gigabytes. Uh, you're going to be putting a lot of programs on here, and more importantly, it's going to house a lot of ISO files that can install operating systems. And as you know, those can get pretty big. Personally, I'm using a 64 gigabyte flash drive, and it's more than adequate for my day-to-day -day use. Next, you'll need a PC and an internet connection. So if you have those things, we can get started. Just like Jeff Foxworthy says, get her done. Okay, so to get started, head over to easytoboot.com slash downloads and scroll down to about the middle of the page. Download the easytoboot v182dpms.exe. After it finishes downloading, run the easytoboot.exe installer. I got a warning from Windows about the installer, but I've installed this on a couple different USB sticks and I've never had a problem. So click on Run Anyway to proceed. The easy to boot USB installer looks like this. Now when you get to this part, make sure you have the proper USB drive selected in the drop down menu because this is going to overwrite whatever USB stick you use and it's giving you a fair warning right there. In my case, I always play it safe with programs like this and I only have one USB stick inserted in this drive at this time. When you are ready, select the big red box. It's going to give you one more warning, and if you're ready, just hit OK. You'll see this pretty blue screen. When it's done, the screen will turn green. You can press any key to continue, and you are done. Your USB stick is, for the most part, created at this point. You can close this window and exit the installer. Okay, so now open up that USB stick and you'll see at the root, there's a file called underscore ISO. Inside the ISO folder, you'll see a bunch of folders like antivirus, auto, backup. I'm gonna focus on the Linux and the Windows folders. I already have a folder with a bunch of ISOs in there. I'm just going to copy these to their respective directories. If it's a Windows installer, I'm going to copy it to the Windows folder. And if it's a Linux installer, I'm going to copy it to the Linux folder. It couldn't be easier. Now the really great thing about this is you no longer have to burn USB sticks every time you want to create an ISO installer. You just drop it in one of these folders. You don't have to use something like Rufus anymore to burn a USB stick every time you want to install a new OS. While that stuff is copying, I'm going to go back to the root of the USB drive and I'm going to create a folder in there called Tools. And inside there, I'm going to drop all of the utilities that I use. This is my list if you're interested. Some of these I got from portableapps.com. Some of them I've downloaded through the years. Some of them are batch files that I've written. Basically, this is a catch-all for all of your different utilities that you're going to use. Okay, so now after all of the files that you're going to use, the ISO files, your utility files, are copied to the proper location on the USB stick, eject it from your PC, plug it into another machine that you want to install an operating system on, and turn on that old machine. Okay, so this is what you should see if you did everything right. This is the easy to boot main menu. I'm gonna go through and just install something from here, uh, just so that you can see how simple this process is. But in here we've got our Windows installations, and on this disk I've got a Windows 10 installer. It loaded up my Windows 10 32-bit and 64-bit ISOs. But I'm gonna install something 
from the Linux side of things because there is one in particular in here that will install really, really quickly. And uh, But here in the Linux menu, you see that we've got Clonezilla and Gparted, both I use a lot. But we've also got some standard uh, different Linux distributions like from the Ubuntu family, um, Lubuntu, uh, and I've got some 64-bit installers and 32-bit installers. But down here, I'm going to just load up Porteous because it loads up really fast. So uh, it asks what ISO ask extension we want. Most of the time, you're just going to answer I here. And here it's loaded up Porteous. We're going to run it in graphics mode. It's loaded up now, and this is what we're uh, looking at here. So this is just working as though it's a um, live disk. Uh, a, a Linux live disk um, and from here as a lot of you know you can go through and you can run the installers I'm gonna run the Porteous installer so when you run this installer you've got to be very careful this is our actual this is our E2B boot drive here so we want to make sure that whenever we install anything off of this we're not overwriting that which I'm not even sure that you can. I'm going to install this to the internal drive on the machine and we do want to install the bootloader for this. Here we follow the prompts in the terminal. We type OK to continue. And look at that, done already. Love it. Now we're going to shut the system down. We're going to eject the disk, the E2B disk. We're going to reboot the system and now we see that Porteous is actually installed. So that, in my opinion, is the ultimate USB stick. I didn't really go over what tools to put on your stick because ultimately, that's up to you. If you don't have any tools currently or are looking for more ideas to put on your stick, a great place to start is PortableApps.com. And as I stated before, this is very easy to add on to in the future. Let me know in the comments what you have on your toolkit. Maybe you have some great utilities that I've overlooked. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of my future content. Also swing by any of my social media pages and say hi. Let me know if there's any Lodo hardware or software that you would like for me to cover in the future. Future projects on the horizon will be covering low-cost video production for YouTube, low-cost Linux servers, and cord cutting. Bye for now, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.